Merry Christmas. It is such a joy to have you joining us for worship. Many of you are here tonight as we live stream on Facebook. I hope you will take a minute and check in, or if you have prayer requests, to post those in the comments or to go to our website and share those. Tonight, as we gather together from our homes, from our places and spaces that we find ourselves, no matter where we are, what a joy it is to gather to worship our Savior on this Christmas Eve. Tonight, as we prepare our hearts for worship, we would be remiss if we did not just take a moment to celebrate the ministries that are coming to you in 2021. <gasps> Those words feel really good to me to say the new year, 2020, 20, ah, 2021. We will continue our ministries with children and youth via Facebook and Zoom and in person as our creativity works to find ways to connect following the social distancing guidelines that are recommended. Our life groups and small groups are going strong and new opportunities will be available for you to connect in small groups in 2021. We are talking about creating an outdoor pop-up church experience that will allow us to meet to have a brief devotion and to do something active together. We've even talked about meeting or gathering at some of our nursing home or care facilities so that persons who seem to be the most isolated these days can be drawn in to that which we offer. And as we look at our worship experiences in January, the verse of scripture that will be guiding us is Psalms 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. In 2020, we delved into the book of Acts, and most recently, we have been studying the book of Luke. More than any other, other book of the Bible, it seems to me that Luke really has invited us to focus on issues of race and relationships with persons who do life differently than we might do. We have had to boldly ask ourselves, who is my neighbor? And not through my eyes, but through the eyes of Jesus. Lou creates a radical vision of God's people as inclusive, regardless of socio socioeconomic status, physical appearance, or ethnic or racial identity. Luke points us to a community that forms as Christ followers, share the good news of God's faithfulness with the Gentiles. So when the disciples ask, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? The risen Christ answers, You will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This coming Sunday, December 27th, um, we will be showing pictures of you. My hope is, following this time of worship, that you will go outside. You will take your light, your candle that celebrates Jesus Christ as Lord and King and with whoever you can gather with. You'll sing Silent Night, you'll take your photo, and you will post it at hashtag 2020 Light Joy or send it to me at my personal email. And through that, we'll collect all those pictures so that we can celebrate and show those on December 27th. Then as we continue walking into January, January 3rd, we'll celebrate Epiphany and the coming of the Three Kings to the manger's edge. And on January 10th, we're going to celebrate the baptism of our Lord. We're going to celebrate our own baptisms. And we're going to celebrate that we are children of God. And in that celebration, we're going to celebrate where you have found joy this Christmas season. Some of you, maybe not all of you, many of you, and if you want to let us know where you found joy, again, just share that with us in the comments. But we want to take the ornaments that we've placed on the tree outside to dump out the scrabble pieces that you have written on um, where you're finding joy. And on January 10th, we want to share with you those glimpses of joy that you have seen. And then finally, as we continue to walk into January, January 17th, the theme that we have identified is reflecting the kingdom, the kingdom community in the making as we step, step into a five-week series unpacking racism, repentance, relocation, reconciliation, and restoration. 
as we celebrate the beautiful people that God has created each of us to be, as we seek to listen to each other's hearts, stories, and understanding of Scripture in the light of our cultural diversity and in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We hope you won't miss a Sunday. You won't miss a week of worship. So tonight, we are so glad that you've joined us for this moment. Come with me now as we journey to Bethlehem. I'm Brian Nimmo, this is my wife Chelsea, and our three-month-old daughter Emma. While we would normally be celebrating Christmas with extended family and going to Christmas Eve service, 
This year we will just be celebrating with my parents. This year we're finding joy in Jesus by joining into service remotely and celebrating the gift that's Emma's first Christmas. Today we light the Christ candle to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Jersey. 
Thank you so much, Caroline Handbells and Connie Nicholson, for that beautiful gift of music on this Christmas Eve. As we come now to the time of celebrating the gifts of our offering, this year, this Christmas, our offering is going to help those persons whose homes were harmed in the floods this spring. And in so doing, we're really trying to find people who are hidden, people who are missed, so that they can go from places that really aren't liv livable to a place where um, they can find heat and warmth. And John Engler is one of our point persons here, and he has the inside sight of what is going on. So I've asked him to come tonight to share a little bit about what's happening and what will happen with the Christmas gifts that you offer. I, I'm so just really excited for, for to see our church and as we've continued this. You know, May 19th happened and, and our church did so many wonderful things. Hundreds of families that we, we helped. We, we helped muck out here in Midland, also in Sanford, and we've done so many amazing things. And a little over a month ago now, uh, myself and along with Adam Cyan, who's the owner of uh, Sanford Hardware, we drove through Sanford and, and we realized there's still so many people that are, that have, like you said, have fallen through the cracks. And we've started to really push and we've started to really work with them. And, and weekly I'm in meetings, weekly we're talking, we're discussing, we're working with Sanford Strong, we're working with the Midland Strong group, we're working with these people to help these families. And, and you've said it perfectly. These are the families that have fallen through the cracks, the ones that FEMA didn't quite help with or didn't understand, the Red Cross, the different organizations, and, and we're falling, you know, just really falling between, you know, all of that. And we as a church, we've, we've come alongside already seven families, and it's been awesome to see these seven families, and, and a few of them are already back in their homes. We were hoping to get them all in their homes by Christmas, but that was a little too ambitious on my part, um, but to help them, to help them find um, either living in campers, living in sheds, living in different places, living with family, and help them find a safe, secure place. We've worked with a, with a family, a single father with three girls, to help him um, get a hotel room and have a hotel and a place that was warm because the camper was, was honestly just getting cold. We've worked with a, a mother and her 35-year-old autistic son to help them have a place to live. We've worked with others that are so close to finishing and just couldn't quite get in, and we helped push them across. We've worked with contractors. We've worked with so many people, and it's been so exciting to see our church just use the power that we have to do so many wonderful things. And my hope is our Christmas offering, our Christmas Eve offering, is going to help to continue because there's still so many more. The things that I've learned is every time you find one family and help them, there's two others that you that we it, you know we've just learned about and we've found out that have just really feel helpless. That, and it's been, a, it's been an incredible sight, but I'm so excited because we celebrate together. You know, in our weekly Zoom meetings as, we, as this group of like 10 of us that all get together and we discuss and we find homes and we find places, and then we celebrate. We cry together over some of these people and their stories and, and these that have just been left behind. People that, you know, maybe can't read right now or, or we've stumbled across a lady that is deaf and that's part of the reason why she wasn't getting help, because she didn't understand the help that people wanted to help. And we're working with them, hand in hand, walking through life and helping them. And it's been so cool as we've helped, you know, a couple of those first that get in. And they ask, what, what can we do to return? And I said, just pay it forward. And, and they're going to other people. You know, the one guy learned how to do electrical work on his own. And so now he's going and helping his neighbors do electrical work and teaching that to other people. So paying it forward and continuing that on. And like you said, we're not going to stop. We can't stop until every last person has a warm place to stay. That if they're willing to work, we're willing to work with them. And it's been, and it's been really exciting. As, and, and, and personally, like you said, I've, I've shed tears. I've watched people as they've had to clean out their childhood homes and, and start to rebuild. And that process... And I just ask you as a church to come alongside this as we continue to grow. And, and the simple fact that I'm excited can't say enough of the good work that we can be done. Again, not that Midland First is seen, but we want Christ to be seen in all of this. Amen. Thank you so much, John. And if you want to give this year to the Christmas offering, you can go online and you can give a one-time gift this evening, and that will go towards helping the relief that we're trying to offer. Or you can mail your check here to Midland First United Methodist Church. Will you join with me in prayer? O oh, gracious and merciful God, on this Christmas Eve, 
we just humble ourselves before you. We seek your presence in our lives and to guide us as we make again this journey to Bethlehem. We pray for those who give you hands by doing their best towards their brothers and sisters, for those you give, those who give you a mouth by speaking words of justice and peace for the broken and the oppressed. Gracious God, we hold up to you this night in prayer the lonely and the hurting, the hungry, the homeless, the sick, the dispossessed, knowing that your heart has always been nearest those who are poor in spirit and least likely to be thought of as people touched by the hand of the divine. And gracious God, as we remember tonight, your son Jesus, who gave us the ultimate gift of life. May we in return offer our lives, offer all who we are, that your kingdom may be revealed and seen in us, in the gifts that we give, in the way we live our lives, and shine your hope. And we pray all this as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
tonight, the scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their hometowns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord had, had made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. And in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where? Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage to him. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go, go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they'd heard the king, they set out. They set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child and Mary, his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of this his holy word. So here we are at the manger's edge. Come in close. Gather with me here. Let's pray. O oh, gracious and merciful God, as we gather 
as we've heard your story and as our hearts long to be in your presence. Meet us here, open our eyes, allow us to see the joy of the Lord this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So how did you get here? Who did you follow? What brought you to the space that you find yourself in? Did you take a minute to look up at the night sky? Recently, due to one of my glances at Facebook, I became aware of this phenomenon that was to happen in the sky on December 21st. With a little research and going to um, that place that knows all, I went to Google. And I discovered that the rare conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn was to happen. Did you see it? In the west, just after sunset, sunset, the two bright planets appeared, only seven arc minutes of each other in that night sky. They were so close that they appeared to make a bright double planet. Or maybe, or maybe you caught the meteor shower on December 21st, late, early on the 22nd. The Ursid's meteor shower was a minor meteor shower that produced about five to 10 meteors per hour. It happens every year, December 17th to the 25th. But this year, on our longest night of the year, the 21st, that's when it occurred. Did you see them? Okay, if you did, will you please post some pictures in the comments of Facebook so that we can all see that wondrousness. I'm afraid stargazing and finding a place dark enough to see and to take the time to wait is not something I'm very good at. But these phenomenons intrigued me. They intrigued me because they were so close to Christmas. And on December 21st, that longest, darkest night of our year, what a cool way. What a cool way to interrupt the darkness. And there were others. There were others who followed those constellations in the stars. Those three wise men. The magi. Crazy. But because they saw that wondrous star, they arrived at the manger bed to see the newborn king. Not that there weren't bumps on the way and not that there weren't valleys and kings that they encountered. But once the wise men arrived, once they arrived at the manger bed, they were overwhelmed with joy. Joy, making room, sharing the love of Christmas, and thus finding joy. This has been our theme throughout this Advent season. You know, early on the journey, I went and bought a Scrabble game and opened it up at the kitchen table and played with some of the pieces and played a couple of games. And then I packed it up and brought it to church because, yes, the reason to purchase this game of Scrabble was to use it, and we used it for some of our sermon illustrations throughout the season. But later, when I was at home, I discovered that one of those Scrabble pieces had fallen on the kitchen floor. I laughed, and yes, my first thought was, I need to get that back to church and get that back in the box so that we won't have a missing piece from the get-go from our Scrabble game. But where it landed was next to my table in my bedroom. And so every night I'd look at that Scrabble piece and go to bed thinking, I really need to get that back to church and back in the box. And then after a few days, I thought, you know, maybe I'll put that Scrabble piece in my pocket. Because if I put that Scrabble piece in my pocket, it's more likely to get back to the box that's at church. And then I discovered that as I carried the Scrabble piece in my pocket, as I would put my hand into my pocket, I'd feel that Scrabble piece. And I would begin to think about where I was going to see joy that day. Well... As you can see, this poor Scrabble piece has yet to make it back into the box. 
But what it has done is it has caused me to focus on joy and finding joy every day. And do you know that which we search for? God has an amazing way of bringing to us. It's been a tough Christmas season. It's kind of funny. Every year as I head towards Christmas, I begin to think about the Christmas presents and where they need to go and how they need to get there. I begin to think about who's coming home for Christmas and what those things are that need to be in place before company comes. And I know each year I worry about, you know, the Christmas tree getting up and the lights getting up. And then I worry about what food we will have on Christmas Day and if we'll have enough candy canes or gifts for those people who just seem to drop by and you want to share some kind of Christmas cheer. There's lots of things that we can worry about in getting ready for Christmas. But the journey to Bethlehem, the journey this night when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, I hope you can let all of those things kind of melt away and just let it be about greeting Jesus Christ, the newborn King, for joy. Joy has come to our world this night. Can you even imagine Mary's joy? A new mom holding her baby. You know, there's something about the pain of birth that is quickly forgotten. Okay, I realize for some, the pain is not quickly forgotten. But for Mary, I feel like on this night, the pain of giving birth is quickly forgotten as she holds the baby Jesus in her arms. And as she gave birth to her firstborn son, we hear those words in Luke, she wraps them in bands of cloth and she lays them in a manger. There's something holy, there's something that Jesus interrupts. Even on the journey when it's hard, when it's painful, when it's difficult, Christ's arrival means that joy is in this place. The journey to Christmas, yes, this year has been way different than any other years. Maybe not so different, but for us right now, it's real. With the tensions in our government, social justice issues, the worldwide pandemic and natural disasters, loved ones dying and just too many people battling illnesses and mental illnesses, that it just seems we can't take on too much more. And yet as we have sought joy, we have led the way. People have been more kind. People have been more giving. People have been more patient. And as we have humbled ourselves in the presence of our God and read God's word through scripture and studying together, we have seen the glory of of the Lord, and we have seen Jesus in each other and shared Jesus as we've come together. And now we're here. Now we're here gathered from many different places and spaces. Yeah, I keep saying, and now we're here, and where is here? There's some of you who are watching, and you just long and ache to be in this sanctuary. I have a confession for you. This sanctuary is empty. There's four people in here. It doesn't feel like every other year. But the awesomeness is for those of us who are gathered here in this space. Jesus is here too, and wherever you are hearing my voice and hearing the stories of this night, Jesus is with you wherever you are. We have followed the star. We have followed our hearts. We have lavishly loved as Jesus taught us to. And now we have arrived at the manger's edge to give glory to the newborn king. And as we encounter Jesus, his mother Mary, his earthly father Joseph, 
We pause and reflect and we praise God for the glory of the Lord has been revealed to us. And Mary, Mary, she treasures all these words and ponders them in her heart. And the shepherds, and the shepherds quickly leaving all that they know, encounter Mary and Joseph and the babe. And after seeing Jesus, they return to the fields, giving glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. So have you found joy? So have you found joy? Okay, not the joy that comes through searching through Scrabble letters and seeing if you can find J-O-Y. And not finding joy by looking through the letters to see if you can get that word combination that gets you 100 points. And not the joy that comes from a situation that you can create or make. All those, those are all good. But do you know and have you walked into the space and received the amazing grace and the joy of Jesus this night? Maybe it's your first time to know that there's a God who loves you so much that he sent his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe this is your first time to know that the joy of our day to day is not found in stuff, but the joy of our day to day is found in Jesus Christ. And tonight, and tonight, in fullness of grace of all humanity, Jesus becomes one of us. That we might know a Savior who gets us, who gets this humanity stuff, gets the trials, gets the tribulations, and yet in his suffering and death conquered sin and evil that we might rise to new life. Do you know joy? Do you know joy? I've been reminded this season of the story of the Grinch who stole Christmas. Seems like it's been remade three or four times at least that I'm aware of. It's the story of the Grinch who sees the Who's down in Whoville and every year Christmas time they have presents and gifts and lights and all this stuff and on Christmas morning they sing this song and the Chris Grinch just really does not like it. So he steals everything that he thinks makes up Christmas. And having taken, having taken everything they have away from them that represents the lights and the decorations, the presents, the food, the who's down in Whoville, they still gather around and they sing their song because they know the joy. The joy of life is not in all the stuff. Now, I don't know exactly who the Whovilles place their joy in, but I know that our joy is found only in Jesus Christ. Well, I remember a Christmas one year with my dad. We were visiting, and in that season, he asked us if any of us wanted to go Christmas caroling to our neighbors. And my dad shared with me early on the amazing love of Jesus, that I knew that joy. And in that and in the picture that you see, my dad and Mara and Lisa, my um, niece, Mara and Lisa, my daughter, two years apart, two peas in a pod, they were willing to go Christmas caroling with us. You know, it's those moments of joy revealed when we're able to take our faith and to share it in simple ways, even in the midst of all the challenges that seem to surround us. So where, where did your Christmas journey take you? 
Did you make it? Are you here? At the manger's edge with our Savior Jesus? Are you here to greet and welcome the newborn king with Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men? Did you make room? Did you find joy? This night, will you join me in the celebration as we welcome Jesus into our homes, into our hearts, and into our lives for joy to the world. The Lord has come.
you, Kate and Wesley. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. As we come to this time in our worship service, it is time for us to shine the light of Christ. Some of you in your connection bags, you have a candle. If you do, now is the time to turn that candle on and to let it shine. Or maybe you've got just a candle in your home or a flashlight or your phone, whatever it is, I invite you to remember Jesus and the light and the love and the joy that Christ offers to us and wherever you are to shine that light. Join us in singing Silent Night as we share the joy of Christmas. Merry Christmas. And now, as hard as it has been to not be able to do the traditional candlelight service in the sanctuary, 
the joy that we get to interrupt this night is taking our candlelight service to the streets. I invite you to take your candle, to take your phone, to take your light, to go outside, to sing Silent Night. Take a picture if you can. Put it on social media with the hashtag 2020 Light Joy or send it to me so that we can gather all of our pictures together and celebrate the ways that Christ love, light, and joy cannot be put out. But celebrate the glory of the Lord that is risen. Go with great joy and peace. Amen.